everyone, I'm Armor Gaming. welcome back to my channel and welcome to Monster Analysis. Today I'm going to be analyzing Cassia or Kasha, however you want to pronounce her name. I think I like Cassia better. Cassia! Monsters come to Cassia when they're most desperate. Lost causes stop being such when she handles them. The rituals of this priestess are famous for the white fire she lights. Now in my opinion, Cassia has by far one of the best designs in the game. I really really like her design. And that's actually about it. I'm probably going to disagree with a lot of people here. I actually, I have to do a little mini rant before I actually start straight into the analysis. And it has to do with this skill. The light lives in you. Revives all allies, applies double damage to our allies may give precision to our allies, Cassia will instantly die. I feel that when monsters come out, people have a tendency to just look at one skill, see that skill as being really really good and then thinking that monster is overpowered, they overhype that monster and I don't think that's the case. I think when you look at a monster, even if they have a really good skill, you need to look at other skills and specifically you need to look at stats, you need to look at the monster's trait and then you can decide if that monster is really overpowered or if that monster is even good. Now after looking through this monster, I really don't think she's that great. I love the skill, however, I just don't think it's that great and I'll talk about that more later on. So before you automatically dislike this video and just hate what I have to say, please do hear me out until the end and then if you disagree with me, I'd really love to hear about it in the comments below. So we start off with her power, 3454, that is really really impressive. That actually falls right below Laith who has 3454. 498 so she has the second strongest power for the light monsters you would think that she would be an attacker but let's move on her life is 20,651 now while this life may seem pretty high it's actually near the lower end for light monsters as of the time I'm making this video there are only 12 light monsters and Cassia's life is actually fourth from the bottom so even once a lot more light monsters have been released I imagine her life will still be near the bottom her speed however is one of the best 3,630 that actually makes her the second fastest monster of all the monsters and actually that makes her the fastest light monster. So that's really impressive. She has a really really high power, 3454 again being the second highest for light monsters and it's actually just high overall of all the monsters. And the speed of that fast, now it's kind of hard to say is she really an attacker because attackers tend to have really low speed. But we'll get into that in a little bit. She is of course a light monster, her weakness is metal and her trait is immune to stun. I believe she's the first light monster to have a stun immunity. So, so far so good. Stats are amazing, trait is pretty darn good. Now one thing we know about light monsters is that light monsters tend to be supportive. So let's look at her stats and see if that turns out to be the case or if she's going to be an attacker because otherwise why would she have such a strong power? So we start off with staff blow, glowing strike, you can't really tell anything by these skills, they're the default, 25 damage, 30 damage, okay we're going to skip those and move on to embrace the light. All targets heal by 50%, adds 50% of stamina to all allies, may give double damage to all allies, may give precision to all allies. This is one of the best supportive skills in the whole game. And it's a special skill, it's an awesome team special skill. So not only do you recover 50% of your life and recover your stamina, you also get double damage, you also get increased accuracy. Such a good supportive skill. And now let's move down to skills group 1. In skills group 1 we have stupefying flare, 35 damage, 26 stamina, no cooldown, 50% chance to blind. We have senseless glimmer, deals moderate light damage, 35 damage, 26 stamina, no cooldown, 50% chance to daze. So we have a blind skill, we have a day skill, we normally see these with light monsters or light based attacks. And we have crippling flash, may slow down all targets, requires cooldown, an AoE slow. That is a pretty good skill, if slow actually hits, this is the skill you want to test. If you get Cassia, you want to test the skill and see how often slow actually lands. If it turns out it lands quite often, you want to run the skill. I'm surprised this in skills group 1, definitely a good skill. Now just based on the fact that we saw skills group 1, she had two offensive skills, one supportive skill, you would possibly start to think, hey, she might actually be offensive. But now let's move over to skills group 2 and skills group 3. In skills group 2, we have a skill called Smashing Gleam. Deals moderate special damage, removes all positive status effects from the target. 40 damage, 20 stamina, no cooldown. Now normally I would disregard this move because it's not that powerful, but I do like the effect that it removes all positive status effects from the target. And the reason this is particularly good is because lots of light monsters are really supportive like I mentioned previously. That means lots of them have buffing skills, lots of them have stamina regeneration, life regeneration, lots of them give their allies, lots of light monsters give their allies supportive buffs. So in the context of team wars, it's really good to have an attack that removes positive effects from the enemy monsters. So this is a skill you might want to run. Let's move over to Blinding Flicker. Blinding Flicker deals low light damage to all enemies. 
may blind all targets. It's an AoE blind skill which is really good. As you know blinding decreases the enemy's accuracy by 50% so imagine all the enemy monsters with a minus 50% accuracy. That's a good skill to have. It's only 25 damage, it's 35 stamina and it's a 2 turn cooldown. The cooldown is pretty low and the damage is pretty low so clearly right now we're not seeing an attacker anymore. But let's move over to purifying beam. Purifying Beam removes all negative status effects from allies, requires cooldown. No damage, 26 stamina, 2 turn cooldown. Now I'm personally not a fan of removing negative effects from your allies, like yes there are definitely negative effects that you want to remove, but the main negative status effects are the ones you really can't remove. You know when you're stunned, when you're frozen, when you're possessed, I mean possessed isn't too bad because you can always just recharge. But when you're frozen and stunned specifically, those are the ones you want to remove. This skill could really come in handy though when you're going against monsters that have AoE stun, because Cassia is immune to stun. So suppose the enemy does AoE stun, and then you won't be stunned, and then you'll be able to do purifying beam and remove stun from your allies. So it could come in handy, however I don't really see a use for this skill personally. So what do we see in skills group 2? We have smash and gleam which you might want to run, and we have blinding flicker which is definitely a good skill and I do recommend running blinding flicker. However skills group 2, the majority tends to be supportive skills. So now let's move over to skills group 3. We have energizing ray, removes all negative status effects from itself, gains one extra turn, requires cooldown. No damage, 28 stamina, 2 turn cooldown. So once again we have a skill that does no damage, it's really supportive, it's a self supportive skill, you remove negative effects from yourself, and even though this skill gives you an extra turn, I'm not a fan of it. So going back to skills group 2, we have smashing gleam which is no cooldown, we have blinding flicker which is an AoE, blind lasts for 2 turns, we have purifying beam which removes negative status effects from your allies, so I really don't see the point of giving yourself an extra turn. Sure you can remove like a burn or a poison or bleeding from yourself and then use your extra turn to do something else but I really don't see a point of this move so I don't recommend energizing ray. We move on over to fear the light and I do like the skill deals low light damage to our enemies, applies one random negative effect to our targets. It would have been a lot better if it applied two negative effects but at least it's still one. 30 damage, 35 stamina, 3 turn cooldown, here are all the negative effects you can actually apply. So I do like this skill, so so far really Fear the Light and Blinding Flicker are two really good supportive skills, 25 damage AoE blind, 30 damage random effects, I do recommend running those two skills. And then we move over to the move that has really hyped up this monster, the light lives in you, once again revives all allies. I think that's the main part that people like, revives all allies, applies double damage to all allies may give precision, so you also get 2 times damage and increased accuracy once you've been revived. The problem with this is that Cassia will instantly die. It's no damage, 38 stamina and it has no cooldown. The reason it has no cooldown is because you'll lose your monster. Now one thing to note is that Spirit of the Light self it says minus 100% health. What does that necessarily mean? If it's anything like Barbatos, maybe just maybe you can use Timerion to do space time and you won't die. Or maybe just maybe you can give yourself a full life shield and you won't die. Maybe it takes away your max health as opposed to actually killing you instantly. This is up for debate, I guess we won't really know until this monster is released, but regardless of which it is, I still don't think this monster is that great. To speak on the part of Timerion, if you're a person that's arguing, well this monster is great because you can do the light lives in you, in conjunction with Timerion space time. So what you're saying is that Timerion is alive, and Cassia is alive, and you're only trying to revive one of your monsters. So then why not just use Uriel? He revives one monster, there's no reason to use Cassia and risk killing yourself. Do you get what I'm saying? Like I really don't see the need for this skill. And I know a lot of you are thinking this monster Cassia with Uriel would be really good because she can give herself up then Uriel can revive her. And that's actually what I thought at first but then I stopped myself, thought about it and decided it's not that good. And I think that's what happens when we focus on a single skill and just lose track of everything else. So we're focusing right now like this monster can die, heal two allies, Uriel can heal one ally so they can heal each other endlessly. But like really stop and think about it, how many times are you honestly going to use that? I think a similar thing happened when General Alsis was released. When General Alsis was released, people saw he had a skill that recovers 100% of health and people were saying, oh my gosh this is overpowered, General Alsis and Barbatos, OP, OP, OP. But when you really think about it, how OP is it? Barbatos loses 20% of his current life using blood, he, uses, he loses 30% using Master of Pain, and I really don't see a time where you'll ever need 100% heal. But even better, you can use a shield on Barbatos and that works a lot better than 100% heal. But when people see a, a skill and they combine it with another monster, they think it's OP, you really really have to think how feasible is it really. So just to talk about Cassia and Uriel actually working together, Uriel revives a monster, right? Cassia revives two monsters but kills herself. So one thing to keep in mind is that Cassia and Uriel, they're not main deny monsters. You cannot put odd speed runes on them and have them deny the enemy monster. So you're still going to need a main deny on your team. 
whether it be a Timerion with all speed, whether it be a cabin fish with all speed, a Krampus with all speed, you need a monster with all speed. So what you're telling me is you would purposely pick a team with Cassia, a main deny that has all speed, and Uriel, and then what? You would wait for Uriel and your main deny monster to die, and then you would revive them with Cassia, and then after Cassia is dead, you would revive them with Uriel? Why are you going through all that hassle? There's no need to. In terms of PvP, I don't see this monster being utilized just because PvP, you really pick your matches, you give your monster strength runes, you kind of go for like an OTK, you win in one turn. You know, matches should not last that long. That's kind of the thing that happened with Singularis. Yeah, you win in four turns. But games should not last 4 turns, that's just really really long time to last. In terms of Team Wars, yes if it's Legendary and Light, you could potentially pick Uriel and Cassia, but then the same thing happens. The other monster, whatever element it is, it's gonna have to be a main deny monster. How difficult is it going to be to try to win with two monsters whose main purpose is just to revive your dead allies and with a monster that's off speed runes? It's gonna be kind of difficult, not impossible, just kind of difficult. And again, that's only if you're lucky enough to get Legend and Light as two of the requirements for war. There's an 80% chance that it's not going to be legendary as a requirement for war. You know, you have common, uncommon, rare, and epic. So because Uriel and Cassia are light, the chances of actually using both of them in war isn't that high. So suppose it's something like common, light, and some other element, and let's say your common and your other monster died. So yes, you can use Cassia, you can give her up to get back your common and to get back your other monster, but then what? You're still gonna get at most 2 coins, and if anything, once the monsters are revived, maybe the enemy will go, and then they'll just take out your common again, and you'll get 1 coin. Like, I really don't see how feasible this monster is in player versus player, or in team wars. Now, of course, if the requirements for war were something like fire, light, legendary, and for legendary, you had a main deny, say you picked cabinfish, all speed, you have your Cassia, who's your light, you have General Darmouth, who's a fire, and let's say for some reason, General Darmouth and your cabin fish died, then yeah, you would use Cassia, you would use your skill, you would revive your attacker, who's General Darmouth, you would revive your main deny monster, who's cabin fish, and then you'd probably win, but again, I'm just foreseeing, I really don't see this monster being used that much in wars, especially because Uriel can revive a monster, yeah, the cooldown is 6 turns, but he can still revive a monster without killing himself, so I think on that hand, he might be better. The only place I see this monster potentially working out is an adventure map. You know, a lot of people have trouble in adventure map winning because the enemy bosses take you out fast. Well, if you have Uriel and you have this monster, then you could just keep cycling off and then you put a main attacker on you. And that's a way to win, I think, without Timerion or without MMO Monster. But then you do need Uriel, which is even harder to get, I think. So there's that. And again, this is just my opinion on it. I think when we see a skill, we shouldn't overhype that monster just because the skill is good. We need to look at everything else. And let me just get into everything else. I already mentioned that this monster has one of the highest power for light monsters. But when we look at skills, let's just go through them. No damage, damage. No damage. So one third of the skills in skills group 3 actually deal damage. Okay, 30. And it's an AoE. Let's move up to skills group 2. No damage, 40 damage, 25 damage. So in total, 50% of her skills from skills group 2 and 3 deal damage. But now the question is, do they deal a lot of damage? 40 damage, 25 damage, 30 damage. That's not a lot of damage. Most of her skills are 0, 0, 0, and let's actually move up to skills group 1, crippling flash, also 0. And I don't think many people would want to run these two because they're only 35 damage, especially when Smashing Gleam has no cooldown, so you'd probably just want to use this attack if you're going to use her offensively. So I think the best skill set for this monster is really to make her supportive, and you would probably use two team speed runes and a life rune, maybe two life runes and a team speed. And the reason you want the life runes is because you want to make sure she's the last to live. You absolutely 100% she needs to be the last one alive, which means the enemy needs to take out the other two monsters. So the life runes ensure this happens. For skills you would do, the light lives in you. You would do fear the light. So these two from skills group 3, you do not need energizing ray. So the light lives in you, fear the light, blinding flicker, 25 damage AOE blind. That is actually a super good skill in my opinion. And you would do crippling flash if it turns out that this skill actually lands more often than it misses. If you can slow the enemy monster and blind the enemy monster and give them random negative effects, that's really good. The light lives in you is just like a last resort kind of skill. And if you're finding that crippling flash doesn't work as often as you'd like it to work, I think it'd be good to put in smashing gleam just to have a stronger attack. You know, she has a high power, a nice individual attack that removes positive effects from the enemy monsters because there's lots of times when the enemy monsters might buff themselves with double damage, they might give themselves haste, they might give themselves life regeneration, stamina regeneration, there's so many positive effects that light monsters can give to their teams or to themselves that this skill would be pretty good worth running. So to review really quickly, the light lives in you, fear the light, blinding flicker, and crippling flash would be a really good skill to run. 
and if Crippling Flash isn't working out as often as you'd like it to work, run Smash and Gleam. And I know I said 2 team speed and a life rune, but I would also recommend you guys try out 1 life, 1 team speed, and 1 strength. And the reason I say strength rune is just because she already has a high enough power and because she has smashing gleam that's no cooldown and you know just because these skills are really weak i think it might help just to give her a little extra damage so she's not completely there just to be supportive just to give herself up to help your allies you know it's worth trying but again i just want to end by saying don't jump to conclusions when you see a monster don't over hype a monster just because they have a really good skill really look at the monster holistically look at all the skills see if they work with the monster's power with the monster's speed with the monster's life See if they really work together, and then try to think of scenarios in player versus player. How often would you use this monster? How often would you? How often would the situation you're depicting in your head actually play out? Think of the monster team wars. Apparently, team wars is what really, really matters. How good is this monster in team wars? Is this a monster I'm going to be using often, or is this a monster I'm just going to be having in my legendary habitats to collect gold? And then lastly, think about adventure map. Can this monster help me out in adventure map? And if the answer is yes to all three of those, then we have a pretty good monster. If the monster is only good at one of those or none of those, then that monster is not as good as you originally thought. But again, that's just my opinion on the monster. And that also concludes my analysis on Cassia. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm really, really curious to hear what you guys think about this monster. So make sure to comment below your thoughts about her. Whether you think she's good or bad, whether you think she's overpowered or not overpowered. Also, let me know who you want me to analyze next week, and I'll see you guys then.